All right, so I'm Dr. Rachel, and I know sex, and I am here with a man who knows sex. Mr. Marcus is joining me today. So we've got a couple things to talk about, and the biggest one that I want to ask you is being a guy that's been in the industry for almost going on 20 years now, what is the biggest change you've seen in the adult film industry from where it used to be to where it is now? Right. Uh, I think the biggest change is there's more people doing it. <laughs> you know, it went from, like, certain type of girl to the girl next door, and that's because of the internet. I think technology has propelled porn. It's it made it more accessible, and it's also, you know, put it in more people's hands. You know, it's, it, it's not underneath the mattress anymore. Now, how does that affect your bottom line? And I mean, like, because part of this is economics. So how does it affect a professional? Because, you know, you, you, you know how to do this. You could do this probably blindfolded. And then you have all the, the amateurs coming through. Does, does that affect the bottom line? Mm, nah, you know, it doesn't, it doesn't affect me. Um, you know, I kind of create my own lane. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I stay true to the sex. There's no, there's no gimmick. There's no niche. It's just about the sex. And so for, for that, you know, there's no competition. That's great. That's great. Now, you made it sexy to wear a hat during sex. You yeah, know? yeah. So Mr. Marcus is the gentleman that probably if your guy shows up in the bedroom with a hat on, it's because he's seen one of your movies. Right, right. <laughs> so in terms of that, if, in, if you had to pick one thing that you would say you're the proudest of in terms of your performance and stuff, what would that be? What's your one thing that you brought to the industry? Probably, I mean, I don't know. I like I like the, the, using the word stamina, stamina. longevity. <laughs> <laughs> definitely, definitely. Seems, uh -huh. So I thought that some of that was camera tricks. Is that camera um, tricks or is that actual? No, nah, I mean a, a good editor helps. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> you know, <laughs> but you got to work with something. So I do my best, you know, to make it as, last as long as possible. Okay, good. Now, now bringing that up, then. So if you have to give the tip to the guys, like. Because, you know, t uh, being a sexologist, that's the number one thing guys ask is, how can I last longer? How can I be bigger? If you had to tell them, you know, how can you last longer, what would be your tip? Well, I mean, a lot of things take practice. You know, don't expect to get with a woman and be, you know, everything she wants. Because mm -hmm. usually if you can be, and then it'll go downhill from there. Sometimes it's cool to start at the bottom and work your way up, kind of fill each other out. Because I've been with girls that were maybe... It started out great, or and then it just kind of didn't really continue. But then I've been with girls where we we took the time to learn about each other's bodies and and kind of figure out until and it's a trust thing because you know you're always like oh, let me do it oh I'll do it and you're you're dominating, but then you get to a point where you're comfortable with each other and then she just kind of let the woman do her thing and you and it's a teamwork. Yeah, team effort. It's, it's team effort, you know. <laughs> okay, you know that there was this movie that came out recently called The Numbers, where every, all the ladies were trying to figure out, qu counting the numbers of guys that they'd been with, and they were counting them, and some were embarrassed, and some were. Being a, an adult film star, do you know how many women you've been with? Like, have you? Nah. No. I mean, people have asked me that before, and then, and then sometimes it's just rude. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> like, you don't, you don't, you don't even want to know. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, so, so you know, with, with that being the case, and I know um, with the industry, there's a couple, like for instance, Vivid Entertainment, I know they require the uh, actresses and the actors to wear condoms. Well, they're, that... they're condom optional. Okay. Yeah, they're, they, them and Wicked, Wicked is condom, you know, mandatory. Okay. But uh, Vivid is optional. You can, if you want to wear condoms, you can. You can. Okay, and you've been very vocal throughout that, pretty much, about your opinions as to where, whether or not people should be required to wear condoms during right. adult movies. What are your opinions on that? Uh, I'm optional. I, I believe it's your choice. I don't think we should force it upon someone, especially when they're consenting adults, because, you know, you know, women and men, you know, it's always men get the blame for not wanting to wear condoms, but women are the same way. There are women out there who don't want to have it worn either. And I think that that speaks, and you know, if we if we enforce our testing, our test is pretty ri rigorous and it's it's continuous. You know, it kind of overlaps. We get tested so much that you know, there's I I trust our testing system. And I think it's something that can you know puts us ahead of the crowd when it comes to that because there, there is so much sex and there is that testing. But if you throw condoms in the mix, it's not a bad thing. I just don't think that you should force a group of people that are willing to do it. And consenting to do it however they want to do it. Um, yeah. 
Now, now you mentioned that you trust the system, and I, 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 you know, and I, ha I have to go there because recently, for, for the, the audience that doesn't know, the porn industry had to shut down a few days because you tested positive for syphilis. Mm -hmm. And can you talk a little bit about what happened? Because the, there, there's some alternating stories as to how that happened and how you ended up right. transmitting it to other people. Um, well, in my in my case, you know, I. I didn't know what, you know, I didn't really recognize the symptoms of syphilis because in our industry, we, we only test for it twice a year. Okay. So every six months we're testing for this. We're testing for chlamydia, gonorrhea, and HIV every month. Okay. And, um, and you know, during this period, we hadn't been testing for syphilis. And so I'm getting tests and working as normal, but, you know, I'm taking the test like everybody else, but we're not taking a syphilis test. And I'm not thinking about syphilis. Mm -hmm. You know, no one in our industry is thinking about syphilis. No one in America is thinking about syphilis. Right. Mm -hmm. It's, you know, the numbers were low. I mean, it had, you know, but there's a resurgence of it. Mm -hmm. And um, I, I don't know, there was a breakout in Europe. Some girls that came here and worked, and then they went there. And it's so we, we're trying to identify, but it's kind of hard when some of the people are halfway you know, across the, across, the, across the country, right, on the other side of the world. I got caught up in it mm -hmm. um, because I went to my private doctor because I was, just wasn't feeling right and I was starting to see symptoms that just going on in my body. There was something wasn't right. I thought it was stress. Yeah. I thought it was uh, something internal and, you know, I kept thinking, well, maybe it's just because I'm stressed out. And what were some, were you, were you losing weight? What were some of the symptoms? You well, uh, you get a rash mm -hmm. and, you know, I, you get a rash in places, it can be around your genitals or it can be, what I started to get was rashes around my hands. Mm -hmm. And it was freaking me out and I was showing people. Because mm -hmm. I was like, what is this? You know, I'm yeah. just expecting someone to, to have the answers. Right. And, uh, and people were just like, you know, let's go to the doctor, mm -hmm. you know. I tried lotion, I tried, yeah. you know, vitamins. Hydrocortisone probably. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> Whatever I can get my hands, I was just trying to, I thought it maybe it was just a skin thing. I thought mm -hmm. it was just, continuing from the stress. And uh, I went to my doctor and he says, you know, blood, he said it looks like syphilis and we'll do a blood test. And came back, I was positive with syphilis. And then, you know, me being the performer that I am and being in the industry I am, it kind of made the industry like, whoa, you yeah. know. How, how did you feel when you got that, when he told you that, were you? I, you know, he, he made no big deal about mm -hmm. it because it's, Same. you know, you know, the, the mistake I made was thinking it was like a, a virus or mm -hmm. a disease, you know, and it was going to, but he was, you know, very specific, get a shot. He told me to come back at the end of the year and we'll test you again because syphilis has a way of the antibodies or something staying in your system. So he was just giving you one shot? Right. Okay. Right. From Based off the symptoms and, and how long, you know, he could tell. Mm -hmm. And I guess the, there's a, a tit a titier number. A titer, yes. A titer. Based yes. on that number, he said, you know. Okay. So a titer, for those of you who are watching, basically means how many particles of this are in your bloodstream at the time. Right. So he probably said, well, your titer is kind of low. You are positive. So if we do this one shot, it'll probably knock it out. Mm -hmm. So he never said, come back and we'll retest you to make sure the titer has decreased right. more. He right. just said, 10 days later, you should be fine. Right. Right. Okay. So I went, and so that was through my personal doctor. Yes. Then I went through our industry, you know, I falling into the regiment that I've been used to every 30 days getting a test. I went and to get the test for the HIV, the gonorrhea, and the chlamydia. And then the, the, you know, the number was still there. Okay, how many days later is this? This was uh, like a week, one week, one week later. Okay. Yeah, a little over a week, like eight days. Okay. So, you know, now I'm worried because yeah. I'm like, what is that, you know? Mm -hmm. And I talked to the doctor and then he, that's when he explained that this number would be there. Mm -hmm. But there was a, you know, medicine, I did the shot, I did the shot the next day. And so they give you a second shot? Well, no, I did the shot, I did the shot back when I first found out I had it. Okay. Right. And uh, then I let that time elapse, went and got a, the, the normal test that I... And the normal test doesn't even test for syphilis though. Right, right. But because they... This specific time we were starting to, oh, I see. I see. <laughs> it was all a matter of timing. Yeah, <laughs> it was yeah. a coincidence. It was like, for me, it felt like I was on a, you know, it was two trains going to collide. No matter how much I wanted to avoid it, yeah. it was going to happen. Mm -hmm. Because I wanted to deal with this privately. Yes. And, I, and I thought to myself, deal with it privately. Because I, 
part of me felt like it would be a big deal, and I didn't want it to be a big deal. Right. So had you had sex with anybody between the two, the two tests? No. No. Okay. No. And so when you went to the second, the, the industry doctor, he mm -hmm. tells you, well, you, you know, you have syphilis, and you tell him, I've had a shot and everything. Mm -hmm. And does he basically say, oh, okay, well, if you've been treated, then that's fine. Right. Right. So. Yeah. He reiterated the same fact. Just, and, you know, it was my doctor that gave me the diagnosis, mm -hmm. and it was the different place where I went and actually got the shot. I see. Right. And I went back to the... After the, you know, after I got the shot and then I found out that the, the tighter number was going to be there, I was like, okay. Does your doctor, your, does your family doctor know what business you're in? No. Okay. So th this, is, this is the thing. So he didn't really even know, doesn't know much about you. And right. it's just, have you gotten a new doctor <laughs> since this <laughs> happened? I, I have to ask. Right. So, right. Okay. Well, you know, it's funny because I, I rarely get sick, man. Mm -hmm. I, I, you know, 18 years in this business, I've I barely caught anything, yeah. you know. And I think I, you had, uh, maybe you talked about one more scare that you had uh, when you were married. Did you have a... Um, I, thought I, I thought I read, an, in, I heard you in an interview say something about, you know, came kind of when you were early into the business, you did catch... I don't know. Oh, like chlamydia or something. Yeah, yeah I probably did. And, mm -hmm. you know, early on, you kind of, I don't know, this theory can be de debated, but I, most men in the business tend to build up immune to stuff like this. Mm -hmm. You know, there's a lot of guys that have been working as long as I have, and, you know, we're all like, you catch, we, you know, you just, chlamydia and gonorrhea kind of like, you know. Kind of like a cough. <laughs> <laughs> like a cold right, it just, I don't know, it's just, so, you know, I, when this happened to me, mm -hmm. you know, I was trying to deal with it in a private matter, and, and I just, I thought it was like, you know, bring your stress down, oh yeah, get this shot, okay, mm -hmm. you'll be fine. And my thinking was just to, can, you know, get back to normal, okay. you know. The, the, the actually, the, the rashes went away, you know, mm -hmm. like within that seven day period, and I started feeling better, and everything looked better, and I, you know. So then you started, you, you said, okay, so I'm over it. And so how did you get from testing positive in both of those places to going straight back to work? Well, I, um, our testing, you know, now they have two tests. Okay. That one checks for your, your, your syphilis if you never had it. Mm -hmm. And then there's a test that we use that tests for syphilis if you've had it before. Okay. So that those numbers are, even though you've been treated, Sure. And you're not infectious anymore. Right. So then you get the, the cosign on the doctor. Well, I didn't have the cosign on the doctor, but I had the amount of time that I had from taking the shot mm -hmm. and getting to the point where I'm at, where I, after the, it was like 11 days now. Okay. And I, you know, and I looked at the symptoms and, and, you know, from everything I can gather from the doctors that I talked to, the things I read online, was that I was okay again. Right, and so you went back to work. Right. Now, what did you show them? Because I, I understand you have to show them documents when you mm -hmm. say, say, I've been tested and everything's right. okay. Right. Did you, how did you alter the paperwork to make Well, it, it was two things. Okay. You know, I, I went to the doctors and I asked them, our testing facility, and I said, okay, I gotta, you know, I need to get back to work. Yeah. And I've had this medicine in my system for a lot of time. You know, symptoms are gone. You know, what can, can I, what can I do to go back to work? And the doctor, one of the clinicians there mm -hmm. said that, okay, well, we can, we can remove that part of your test and just keep it. Because you got to understand, there's two testing facilities in our industry, and one wasn't even testing for the for syphilis. syphilis at all. Right. And they weren't going to start until September. And they're the, they they were the hierarchy. They were the people that. Now kind you, of you talk about the timing, but for, but timing is important with syphilis. So I mean, right. it was such a beautiful thing that you even found out that you had it because most people can walk around with it for years and never get oh, tested yeah. and never yeah. know. Well, yeah, end up with neuro syphilis. Right. So I mean, your timing is like you had angels looking out for you on getting treated. Right. So well, that's I, the good thing. You know, if it was up to me, I would have got treated a long yeah. time ago. I would have I would have caught. You'd have known. I would have caught it immediately and be like, oh, you know. But I didn't know, yeah. you know, I did not know what the symptoms were. They say they call it the imitator because it looks like other, other stuff. Right. <laughs> so, you know, in the media, they're saying that you fraudulently did your paperwork. I just didn't, Is I didn't, I didn't, dis true? I didn't disclose my results for the, the syphilis I because I've been treated. I've been taken care of. We weren't required to show that part. That was like something new, mm -hmm. and it wasn't something that was mandatory that we show each other. You know, okay. there's barely, 
you know, the way, and, and the, one of the, I don't know, one of the problems or loopholes was that I was a well-known performer. Right. And a lot of times I wasn't really asked to show my test. I'd show up and said, me and the girl, and most of the times either the producer had looked it up online or mm -hmm. he kind of left it in the hands of the talent. And the talent would just kind of sign off on each other and go ahead and start working. So, you know, that, that, that helped propel things forward. Sure. You know? Because it's kind of a culture of everybody's comfortable with you, you're comfortable right. with everybody, it just right. kind of goes. Right. So in terms of your colleagues now, how, mm. how are they treating you? Are they treating you Well, that's all changed now. Or, oh, okay. <laughs> I've become the black you know, sheep of the industry and blackballed and mm -hmm. just kind of, you know, a lot of bitterness, a lot of, you know, a lot of disappointment. That was yeah. the first thing because what was, you know, a girl put it, you know, eloquently. She texted me, she says, if you just would have came out and said you had it, we could have deal with it. Because she said it's an annoying disease, mm -hmm. but it's curable. Mm -hmm. Or it's annoying, uh, yeah, it's an annoying disease, but it's curable. And then, but because you didn't do it that way, and you probably would have been seen as a good example, yeah. but because you didn't do it that way, you know, you've opened up a Pandora box of, mm -hmm. of, of things for you and the industry. Well, you know, I know one of the big things is you, you never want to disappoint your fans and your family. I know you're very close to your family, your mom, your dad, your kids. Recently just lost your sister, so your family is just trying to, you know, make it through. When this happened and this hit, how did your family respond? What was some of the advice? That your dad gave you? Uh, well, it was really my mom. Um, you know, she, most of the people that are really genuine, true people, they all say the same thing. This too shall pass. Yes. And, um, and the barrage of criticism and, and you know, hindsight is 2020. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and just, you know, just by who I am in the industry and how long I've been around and how outspoken I am, it was just, it was, it was just really a lot of bad judgment on my part. Um, there was things in our industry that sh could have been done better, like the testing facility. Yeah. You know, could have a doctor would have like said, "Well, let's," you know. Yes, you yes. Know what I mean? Th think if the doctors had stepped in and right, did you know, because there was two separate. It was it was doctors that were outside the industry, and then, and then the, there was no doctors within the industry. Sure, you're you're dealing with clinicians mm -hmm. that are just basically taking your blood and and giving you the results, the results. and saying, "Yeah, fine." Okay. Right. Right. Well, with that being said, you're dealing with this concept of the people who used to trust you kind of don't anymore. So mm -hmm. what's next? What are you, you know, where do you see this propelling? Because, you know, you get lemons, you make lemonade, you know. Right. So where, what's right. next for Mr. Marcus and where are things headed? Well, you know, uh, you know, I have a pretty good fan base. And yeah. Think, you know, thank God they kind of stepped up. Sure. And, it, and it, it, it was, you know, and it was cured a long mm -hmm. time ago. Yeah. You know, so you got to, so you got to deal with. You got You have a certain amount of people that are misinformed. Mm -hmm. Think you're still running around with it. And right. So you got to. You got to convince those people you're cool, and then you got to. You deal with your industry. Try to educate your industry and have better. We have better procedures now because of this. Now we test for syphilis every month. Mm -hmm. um, you know. Now the facility that I went through to get the testing now has a doctor. Yeah. They brought in the two different types of tests because they found out there were people in the industry who had syphilis prior because of the tests that they were taking. They were going to have this some kind of reactiveness to their test. To the there's a, there's going to be a tittier number for them, it may, even though it's low and mm -hmm. they're not infectious. But they still needed to acknowledge those people and sign them off to continue to work. Exactly. Um, so that's changed. Um, and as far as me, I just said, okay, you know, I'm still Mr. Marcus. Yeah, that's you know, right. I, I, I have 18 years in the business, you know. You know, if anybody can go through something like this, me. You can, yes. And you, you'll, you'll still be standing at the end of the day. So for those of you who don't know anything about syphilis, yes, it is a very treatable illness, but you've got to be tested for it and you've got to know you had it. I really appreciate you taking the time to talk with me. I know this has been a tough time for you and your family. Right. And, you know, I've been rooting for you through the whole thing. I really respect the way that you handled it. You came out and said, I made a mistake and I'm going to do better. And what more could we ask from you for that? Right. All right. So I really appreciate it. No Thanks for being here. Thank you. <laughs> Don't forget to click on one of the arrows to see our most commented videos.